With the release of new Scaramouche lore, I think it's finally time for me to show my love for artificial humans. Today, I want to theorize and analyze the potential parallels the sixth Harbinger has to another interesting puppet who had no strings on him. Disclaimer. These are all just personal theories and parallels that I've observed and connected, but none are indicative of the final product. This version of Pinocchio is a PDF that I used for reference and will be in the description. And I was also inspired by Ashikai's Frankenstein Scaramouche analysis and would love to go deeper into literary parallels from other genres. I would also like to thank the sponsor of today's video, Billy Billy Comics. Click the link below to begin your journey through amazing visual novels and stories. A personal recommendation from yours truly is the god of deception. Let's begin with the overarching themes. Pinocchio, or the story of the puppet, is a child's novel by Carlo Calodi about a mischievous animated marionette named Pinocchio. The story itself shares two core themes with Scaramouche's past and future. First is the aspect of the marionette wanting to become a real boy. In the story, Pinocchio was a marionette created from a piece of wood by a woodcarver named Geppetto. Scaramouche, or the balladeer, is known as the prototype puppet of A that was created as a way to test her own divine entity. But throughout his existence, he was constantly reminded by both his insufficiencies and his artificiality by the people around him. His emotions were incomplete, and despite being a harbinger, he never truly realized his own individuality or purpose. Because of these insecurities, he often has thoughts of delusion, desire, and morbid curiosity to compensate, bringing forth the image of a cold and heartless harbinger. But in the end, he too desired a heart. He observed many a heart. Good ones, upright ones, strong ones, and gentle ones. The puppet too would desire a heart. But such a heart is empty without emotions. Which leads me to the second theme of Pinocchio. The change of one's heart and attitude. In the beginning, Pinocchio was a liar, a wanderer, and a brat. But after finding the hardships of the world and learning of wisdom and responsibility, he becomes a real boy. In Genshin, this would mirror Scaramouche's current hardships of receiving a heart. He is now on the run, beginning a new chapter of his story away from the Fatui. But according to the husk of opulent dreams, the heart he obtained was not what he desired. For it did not contain any blessings, but was instead a sacrifice brimming with selfishness, hypocrisy, cunning, and curses. But if he were to wrench this heart out, he would no longer be able to feel anything at all. Scaramouche, therefore, would need to find what a true heart is, if ever it does exist. And I believe that this is why he is currently on the run, and he'll find the truth of his situation by understanding the noses further. It's also nice to note that Scaramouche is a little skirmisher, who was constantly wandering even in his time before the Fatui. And the story of Pinocchio was the adventures of a puppet. I just thought that was interesting. Now, let's go into the more detailed dissection of his whole story, because I believe that there might be some references hidden inside Scaramouche's tale. How these references work would be that they are not a one-to-one -one correspondence with the main story, but rather a nod and symbolism, similar to the Comedia dell'arte's inspiration on him. Additionally, I don't think Pinocchio's story is chronologically one-to-one -one either with Scaramouche. There are four parts of Scaramouche's life that are meaningful. His creation, Kunikuzushi's time with the Fatui, Scaramouche's trip to Inazuma, and Yai giving the noses to the balladeer. So, let's begin. The creation of A's puppet was done with methods lost to time, according to Yai Miko. In lore, we are never told specifically how he was created and through what methods, but rather that he was just a prototype puppet. Though he was most likely created through the same process as Shiki Taisho, which is through paper charms. First is that Tartaglia searches for him in the domain of Harunosuke, stating that he thought Scaramouche would be there. Second is that the phantom he meets in his dreams was akin to a blank sheet of paper, and Scaramouche wonders if that phantom is him in the past or him in the future. This mirrors how Pinocchio was created, a piece of wood found by a person named Master Cherry. Master Cherry gave the wood to Geppetto, who created a marionette. Master Cherry and Geppetto both being present might be a reference to Yai Miko and A respectively. But to continue, in Pinocchio, while the marionette was being created, the marionette was constantly showing emotions and trouble by constantly butting heads with Geppetto. Geppetto commented how unruly Pinocchio was being, but the doll was being a constant troublemaker. In contrast, this tense relationship would be translated with Kunikuzushi being seen as too fragile for his intended purpose. Much like Pinocchio, he began showing emotion. However, it's the opposite emotion. He shed tears in his dream. His creator observed thus, he was too fragile, whether it be as a human or as a tool. But despite this, A did not kill him. 
The next thing that follows from this is a separation of parent and child upon the finishing of a creation. In Pinocchio, the puppet ran away the moment he gained legs. The beautiful puppet awoke for reasons unknown and began his wanderings. During Kunikuzushi's travels, he is left behind with a golden arrow feather, and there have been five notable statements about the plume of luxury. The kind young deputy, the upright inspector, the pair of expectant eyes, the intelligent shrine maiden, and Kunikuzushi's own thoughts that the golden arrow feather was covered in dust. In Pinocchio, there was an instance he was given five gold pieces to give to Geppetto after meeting with a man called the Fire Eater who took pity on him. But now let's move on to the next important part of Scaramouche's life, his connection to the Fatui. During Scaramouche's wanderings, he meets the Fatui and is invited to leave Inazuma to go to Snezhnaya. This awakens the free will inside the puppet and the growth of the man we would now know as the Balladeer. His meeting with the Fatui can relate to several references. First is the blue fairy and the three wise doctors that save Pinocchio. In Pinocchio, after the puppet runs away, he is heavily injured after the bandits hanging on the tree. A fairy with turquoise hair saves him along with three doctors, the crow, the owl, and the cricket. They nurse him back to full health. This may be a symbolism to the Fatui. The blue fairy may be a symbolism to the Saritza who saw the potential in the doll and embarked her harbingers to find him and restore him to full power and more so. As for the three wise doctors, I believe they mirror Il de Torre who could have restored his health with the many human experiment methods he knows of. Second is the parallelism of Pinocchio's performances with the three marionettes. In Pinocchio, Pinocchio meets his fellow marionettes who were conducting a performance in theater. It is here that Pinocchio meets his friends, Senora Rosauro, Pulcinella, and Harley Quinn. It's possible that these three harbingers might be connected closely with Scaramouche's backstory. First is that Piero or the Jester is necessary for Scaramouche's indoctrination into the Fatui. Piero was the one that sent Scaramouche to Pylos Peak back in 1.1, but Piero is also the one who rallies together the Harbingers as seen in the Polar Star lore. For Pulcinella, I believe that Pulcinella may have been the one to find Scaramouche in Inazuma. Pulcinella has been seen to be an older and wiser figure according to Tartaglia's story, and his coat would be perfect for keeping out the cold as seen in the Husk of Opulent Dreams when the man finds Kunikuzushi. Or on the other hand, it could also be Ilda Torre personally finding Scaramouche to investigate him, or Piero recruiting him to the Fatui. Either way, it's one of those three most likely. But last and definitely not the least is Senora Rosaura. Senora was his associate in Inazuma. Additionally, Rosaura could have been a basis for Rosalind, since Senora's name from the Commedia dell'arte is also Rosaura. The lady in foreign garb may be a reference to Senora, and the orb she gave him is either a delusion, a vision, or his catalyst weapon. Though it could also not be Senora, and it might be another harbinger entirely by the name of Columbina, but that is much more of a stretch. And third is the significance of theater in Scaramouche's story. Besides his Commedia dell'arte counterpart, there is a mention of theater in the Calabash of Awakening, in which he names himself Kunikuzushi. Such characters from traditional Inazuma theaters were schemers and usurpers of nations. He chose this name as an act of his own will. Upon joining the Fatui, Scaramouche would develop certain attitudes and qualities that are evident in the way he presents himself. He is sadistic, manipulative, a liar, and unempathetic to those he hurt. This mirrors two notable characters that presented themselves in the first part of Pinocchio's adventures. The fox and the cat are two characters that tried to steal the five coins from Pinocchio by pretending that they were just harmless and lame animals. In Genshin, when we first meet Scaramouche, he pretends to be a vagrant from Inazuma who was just passing by, but in the end, he tries to assassinate the traveler and official. Scaramouche's brattish nature is also reminiscent of Pinocchio's own attitude as a prideful marionette at the start of the story. But now we move on to the third part, the trip to Inazuma to oversee the Vision Hunt decree. This is similar to the first time Pinocchio tried to go back home to Geppetto. He tried to cross the sea where he saw his father on a small boat. However, a large sea monster appeared and consumed Geppetto while Pinocchio was washed to sea. Geppetto is the representation of his first life in Inazuma. The connection he had with Beelzebul, his maker. Geppetto being consumed could be a reference to two things. First is that Beelzebul now recluse herself into the plane of Euthymia after the creation of the Writhing Shogun, effectively consumed in her own pocket eternity. Secondly, Inazuma locked its borders from the world and enacted the Sakoku Decree, blocking it from external forces. 
So, Scaramouche returns to his homeland to oversee the Vision Hunt Decree and fan the flames of resistance by distributing delusions. He plays into the delusions of grandeur that the warriors hold regarding the war, and he preys on the weaknesses and desperate grabs for power. To this, I introduce Toyland. Pinocchio returned to his homeland after seeing Geppetto consumed by the sea monster. His best friend Lampwick told him of a wonderful place where people no longer had to work or study. This place was known as Toyland. And at the stroke of midnight, the two friends head off to Toyland to indulge in their deepest vices, where they find the most amazing carnivals and whatnot. But if something's too good to be true, it probably is. Because after indulging themselves, the young boys in the island would soon realize that they were slowly becoming donkeys, and the ringmaster sells them off to the circuses. Much like the boys in Toyland, those that overused the delusions found themselves changing for the worse. As Goru stated, they were aging rapidly and soon began dying. But during the Inazuma quest, we move into the last part of Scaramouche's tale. His endeavors with the Gnosis. Pinocchio is offered by the Blue Fairy his humanity. When he found out that the Blue Fairy was ill, he immediately gave her 40 pennies. But when he slept, he was visited by the Fairy in his dream, and she gives him the human body he desired. In order to save the traveler who fell into Scaramouche's trap, Yaimiko manifests beside him to give the Balladeer an offer. For the safety of the traveler, she will give him the heart he so desires. Yaimiko gives him the Gnosis. The Balladier agrees and escapes with the artifact. And now, he's gone. But much like Pinocchio, he now has a new purpose and a new form of humanity that he so desired. Or does he? Because unlike Pinocchio's story, his didn't end with him getting his new heart. So now we just need to wait and see what happens. Before I end this video, there were some cool parallels that I found from When You Wish Upon a Star from the Disney movie version of Pinocchio. But yes, that's my personal takes and just my utmost love for literature. I am planning to do videos like this in the future with even more old forms of literature. Genshin really likes doing these sorts of allegories with old stories, like the Ars Goetia and the Commedia dell'arte, so I wonder if they're going to do more of these in the future. But nevertheless, Thank you so much for chilling with me and thank you to Billy Billy Comics for sponsoring this video. Let's begin with the overarching. Overarching? I, is that how you pronounce that? No. Arching. Archway. No. If it's archway, why is it overarching? Arcway. Do you say it like that? Puta, huh? Good man. I'm having a fucking crisis. Okay. That's. <laughs>